Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Thursday morning. This is uh, First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich. Update on the winter storm. I'm getting questions already, you know, 12 hours from my first snowmall map. Uh, are you going to update it? Well, I'll make subtle changes, but honestly, this far out, you're not going to see violent swings in it because I can't really jump on one model run versus another. As we get closer and really tomorrow into Saturday, you might see me make minor adjustments every 6 to 12 hours, but right now I'll talk about my map, why I have it the way I have it now, why you're seeing crazy totals all over the place, and trust me, I've seen crazy totals all over the place, and I'm going to show you why you got to be really careful with these super high numbers in spots. Now, in some locations, I, I certainly, I'm going to tell you, you can believe these amounts, but around Charlotte, please understand that we are going to see snow in Charlotte. It's just a matter of how much. And my big concern is we likely are going to see maybe one to four inches of snow, but then there's going to be maybe a couple inches of sleet on that, and then maybe a quarter or half an inch of ice on top of that. So to me, a little bit of snow with a little bit of sleet and a whole bunch of ice is far worse than getting a foot of snow. So everybody's saying, oh, we're going to get a foot of snow. Actually, it could be worse than a foot of snow. A foot of snow would be better for the roads and honestly power lines around here. Charlotte's biggest issue is going to be ice mixing, and that's why you're seeing me be conservative on the snowfall totals and why you're seeing crazy totals at other places is a lot of people are using models that don't separate the different precipitation types. Some models take all of the precipitation liquid, and if it's below freezing anywhere in the sounding, which is from the ground up, converts it all to snow, at a 10 to 1 ratio. Well, that's not the way the atmosphere works. We never get 10 to 1 ratios, first of all, and it's not going to all be snow. There's going to be a mix in there. So what these models don't do is they don't separate the sleet, the ice, and the snow. They just combine it all and make it snow. And that's why you see super high totals. And if you don't know that, and you just look at a model map or some automated output, it'll make you think, oh my gosh, we're going to get a bunch of snow. When we know, and anybody who lives here for any length of time, you don't have to be a meteorologist knows, we always get a mix around here. So let's talk about the setup right now. The setup has not changed at all. I mean, that's the stunning thing about this system. The overall pattern is still there. The Arctic high is moving in. In fact, tomorrow, you see this little line of snow and a little bit of rain? That's the actual leading edge of the coldest air moving in tomorrow morning. So this is tomorrow morning, about 7 o'clock in the morning. You can see our system developing to the south. So let me put this into motion. And you can see we'll go through tomorrow night. This is Friday night into Saturday morning. Um, so let me stop this on Saturday morning real quickly just to show you um, that the leading edge will get here. Now here's one thing that the model isn't going to do a good job either. You see it looks like, oh Brad, this could start on Saturday morning. Here's the thing. This air mass is bone dry. A lot of this is going to get eaten up by evaporation. Now that'll do two things. One, it won't reach the ground. But secondly, of all, it's going to help cool down the air ahead of us. So there's a really good confidence that the air mass ahead of this is going to be super cold as we go into um, Saturday night. So by Saturday night, and this is Saturday evening, this is when we'll probably start to see some of the precipitation reach the ground. Now notice it's showing a lot of green here. This is another thing. I don't know if this will be rain, but I could totally see this starting as rain in the Charlotte area until that evaporative cooling can take place enough to cool down the entire area. But notice in the mountains and foothills, it starts snow and stays snow. And that's why the confidence for big totals there is super high because that's the place where it's most likely going to stay all snow or at the very least snow and sleet. I don't ever see it changing to freezing rain or rain up there, at least right now. That's why the totals could be crazy high up there. And to the south, the totals could be much lower because we're going to see rain, sleet, and freezing rain mix in. So we'll go through time. Whoops, I went way fast there. So we'll go through Saturday night, and we'll stop this um, going into Sunday morning. And you start to see there's a little bit of everything going on here. Now, this is a little bit faster, the GFS model. I, I think this will be much slower than this, but general idea on Sunday morning, there's going to be a mess. Notice there's a lot of freezing rain sleet here. Notice the green still showing up in Charlotte. That's that's a sign that there's there's trouble in the sounding, that there's going to be a mix. Don't count on this being rain right now. Please don't take that as verbatim. And, and as a model, people do this all the time, and this is why I hate models. I know what's going on here. Most people looking at this say, Brad, that's all rain. The sounding would beg to differ, and just knowing how strong this CAD or this uh, cold air damming regime is, this is going to be much colder than the model indicates. Short range models will always do better with this, and they show it much colder. So as we go through Sunday, you can see those uh, the, the things start to change back to snow. 
uh, and much deeper to the south. So you see the low shifting off to the east. We go through Sunday. We start to see those totals really pop up. But notice where Charlotte is. This is why I can't get carried away with these giant snowfall totals in this area because every indication is there's going to be a mix. If you want to get crazy with snowfall totals, this is the area you need to be crazy with because as you can see, that's the one area, even in this somewhat warmer model, shows persistent all snow. So that's why you can't get carried away with that. And you can see how the event kind of unfolds into Monday and we see a burst of snow on Monday before it all moves out on Tuesday morning. Monday will be interesting because there's an upper low that comes through. It's like a secondary low that has much colder air and a mix isn't going to be much of an issue on Monday, but there's just less precipitation. So there could be maybe for Charlotte and point south for folks that say, oh, we're not going to get much snow. These areas, which we'll see a big mix on Sunday, Monday, this might be more snow because um, of how much colder it is in the atmosphere, but it's going to be lighter snow that starts to move out. So here is my snowfall map as of this morning. I only made minor tweaks to it compared to last night. The highest confidence forecast is from here to Asheville, basically in this region, up to about Greensboro. I have anywhere from 8 to 18 inches in that area. I have huge ranges because you can't be specific. I can't tell you to the closest inch. You're not going to see me get too specific. As we get closer, I'll fine tune this, but 8 to 18 inches is the totals in that area. That area is going to get crushed. I have a very, I have an 80 to 90 percent confidence that somebody in here is going to see a foot of snow. Where things get a little more interesting or a little harder for me and tough for everybody else is once you get south of Interstate 40 to about Interstate 85. I do think there will be a significant accumulation. I have four to eight inches there. That includes northern Mecklenburg County, Huntersville, Cornelius, Davidson, North, northern Gaston County, Lake Norman four to eight inches but just know there's going to be a whole bunch of sleet and freezing rain mixed in there now could these totals go higher yeah if it's colder and it stays snow longer they could go up but they also could go down if it stays freezing rain or sleet longer further south as you get into the metro charlotte south charlotte union county northern york county my light blue area kind of see here i have a one to four inch snowfall it's a huge range i know because as we know North side of town could get four inches. Ballantyne could get one inch. Um, but I could easily see four inches making it further south if it stays primarily snow. And that's the thing. It's hard to imagine this area I'm coloring in south of Interstate 40 to here. It, there's virtually nothing that says this will stay all snow. It, there, it, there's durations of snow where it could stay snow for long periods of time. But at some point, it's going to change to sleet or freezing rain. The only question is, how long does it say sleet, freezing rain, rain versus snow? That's that's what fluctuates the totals. If if 80% of the time it's snow, these totals go up. If 60% of the time it's sleet, the totals go down. But the thing about that, the roads will actually be worse with sleet and freezing rain. So while the totals might not impress you, and I see this all the time, that's ah, not a big deal, Brad, one to four inches. All right, four inches are annual average snowfall. If we get four inches out of one storm, that's all the snow for the entire winter in one storm. That's a big deal. If I told you we're going to get a year's worth of rain in one day, you would probably freak out. If I'm telling you we're going to get a year's worth of snow in one day, it's kind of a big deal. Okay, And then you throw in the snow, this will be a big impact. Roads will be a disaster if we get sleet, rain, freezing rain, and snow. Okay, It's all because temperatures fall Monday night. On Sunday night, it's going to ice over. So it's a big deal. Please don't discount this because you see these totals of one to four and think no big deal. And if you start seeing crazy totals, I'm seeing totals all over the place from the weather service, even from um, the weather channel, from your apps. The reason they're so crazy, remember, a lot of these are counting on it being all snow. And in all of them, and I'll give this credit to the weather service, nobody reads the disclaimers. Tentative. This is based on preliminary data not what we expect to actually happen. So I'm trying to factor in all those things and, and give you an honest forecast at this point. It is always easier to ramp these totals up than to go back down because once you throw out a big number, I guarantee you after this event is over, I'm going to get blamed for that 12 to 18 inch graphic somebody saw somewhere online that I never forecasted. That's why I hate those things because once that number is out there, that's all anyone will ever remember it's always easier to go up. And trust me, the totals I have are significant enough that you need to plan for them. It's not like 
I'm telling you to discount this. I'm just telling you these are more legitimate totals, but the impacts are still huge. You know, we saw yesterday in the mountains, one to four inches caused all the schools to close. The roads were a mess. It doesn't take a bunch of snow to cause big time issues. We have more than enough snow and ice to cause significant issues. And as always, the problem with these, with this setup here is this rain, snow, ice mix. And you may have seen me show this graphic the other day. I'm going to try to get to it here. Let me see if I can get to it. Right here, this is what the problem is for forecasting. At some points, the mountains and foothills will solidly be in this snow. Parts of the Piedmont will bounce back and forth between rain, sleet, and snow. This thing will, this warm air will move this way, then it'll move back this way at different points of the storm, which makes it incredibly difficult to forecast, and that will happen over a long range time. So this vlog went way longer than I expected, but a lot to talk about there. Just to explain what's going on. The number one thing to leave this with, if you watch this long, thank you, please be prepared for a significant storm, even in the Charlotte area. While there's a chance it may not be that bad here because of mixing or even cold rain, the chance, the, 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 the worst case scenario is pretty high. <laughs> the ceiling on this storm is all the way up here, much higher than a typical storm around here. The, the bottom or the basement is probably around two to four inches, but the ceiling is boom, big time event. So plan for that big time event and hope that it's somewhere in between. I'll post another update tonight. We'll do a Facebook Live, and of course, you'll see me on air starting at four, five, and six. Thanks for watching if you watched for 11 minutes. <laughs>